And we're back for the final formulation of the luck argument, which Franklin calls the explanatory formulation. It says that indeterminism is incompatible with actions having a certain kind of explanation and because actions given in determinism lack this kind of explanation, they cannot be free. So let me start by saying a little bit about explanation given in determinism. So it used to be widely believed that if indeterminism is true, then outcomes don't have any kind of explanation. So it used to be assumed that chances cannot explain anything. But that's now becoming a less, becoming a more and more unpopular opinion. So suppose a particle had a 50% chance of decaying within an hour and it in fact decayed into two different particles. Does this event, the decay of the particle, have an explanation? Many people now think that it does, an explanation, does have an explanation. What explained the particle's decay was the fact that it has a had a 50% chance of decaying. Suppose we were initially puzzled by why the particle decayed, but then we studied a couple thousand different particle of the same kind, and we noticed that after an hour, about half of them had decayed. And then it seems, now we understand. Now we can explain why the particle decayed. We're no longer that puzzled. Now we know that it had a 50% chance of decaying, and that's why it decayed. So it seems then the chances can explain. But there's still a question of whether chances allow for a certain kind of explanation in a contrastive explanation. For example, you may wonder why did the particle decay rather than not decay? And it seems for that question, you can't say it's because it had a 50% chance of decaying because that's compatible with either outcome. So the question is, do chances allow for contrastive explanations? And that's what we will be focusing on. And let's jump right in with a free will example and we'll switch examples again. This time, we want to know why Jane decided to vacation in Hawaii rather than Colorado. Suppose the world is indeterministic and Jane had good reasons for either decisions. She loves going skiing, which speaks in favor of Colorado, but she also loves swimming in the ocean, which speaks in favor of Hawaii. And as it turns out, as the chances worked out, she decided to vacation in Hawaii. And the question is then, can we give a contrastive explanation? Can we explain why Jane decided to vacation in Hawaii rather than in Colorado? And the contrastive formulation of the luck argument says that indeterminism is incompatible with free actions because it doesn't allow for this kind of contrastive explanation. Let's look again at Franklin's formulation of the argument. He again breaks it down into three premises and a conclusion. By the core contrast here, Franklin means why the agent performed the actual action rather than the main alternative to it. And he uses the word core only because in principle we might ask lots of contrastive questions. We might also ask why did um, Jane um, vacation in Hawaii rather than not vacationing at all? Or why did she vacation in Hawaii rather than investing the money in the bank? And here it's simply we're interested in Hawaii rather than Colorado, which is our core contrast. So Franklin gives this formulation of the argument and then his criticism of the argument is that the argument equivocates. And remember that equivocation means that an argument appears to be valid, but that's only because a single expression in the argument actually means two different things. This argument here appears to be valid. 
if for every law there is someone who created the law, and if there are laws in nature, then there must be someone who created the laws of laws in nature, which maybe might be God. But on closer inspection, it's pretty clear that this is not a good argument, even though it appears to be valid, and that's because the word law means two different things in the different premises. In the first premise, for the first premise to be true, it seems law needs to mean something like a legal rule. It seems very plausible that for every legal rule, there needs to have been someone who drafted and implemented the rule. But clearly in the second premise, when we talk about laws in nature, law cannot mean legal rule. Law now means something like the kind of principles um, that tell matter how to behave. And that's something very different than a legal rule. And once we understand that the word law means something different in premise two than in premise one, we understand that the conclusion doesn't really follow from the premises. And Franklin thinks that something similar is going on in the contrastive explanatory formulation of the luck argument. He thinks that the first two premises, CEF1 and CEF2, only appear plausible because the phrase contrastive explanation means something different in the first premise than it means in the second premise. So what are these two different meanings of contrastive explanation? Franklin distinguishes between type 1 contrastive explanation and type 2 contrastive explanation. So let's start with a type 1 contrastive explanation. That's what we might call um, explanation given all things considered. So here's the question, why did Shane decide to go to Hawaii rather than Colorado, given the past and the laws? So we're now considering knowledge of the entire earlier set of the universe and the laws. And Franklin admits that if indeterminism is true, then there is no type 1 contrastive explanation, because the entire past and the laws of nature could have led to her Let's suppose they in fact led to her going to Hawaii, but they might equally have led to her going to Colorado. So there is no contrastive explanation in this sense. But Franklin argues that there's a second meaning of contrastive explanation, which he calls type 2 contrastive explanation. And if we give a type 2 contrastive explanation, we are simply naming some factor that caused her actual choice, but wouldn't have caused her alternative choice. For example, one thing that caused Jane to go to Hawaii, so suppose Jane actually vacationed in Hawaii, then one thing that was among the causes of her vacationing in Hawaii is her love of swimming in the ocean. So that's a factor that in fact caused her actual choice. But even though the alternative action was also possible, she could have decided to vacation in Colorado instead. In the world where she vacationed in Colorado instead, her love, her love of swinging, swimming in the ocean didn't cause her to vacation in Colorado. So we've now found a factor that caused her actual choice, but that wouldn't have caused her alternative choice. And Franklin says that if we isolate this factor, we've given a contrastive explanation. So we have this second sense of contrastive explanation. And Franklin now points out that um, CF1 is only true if we understand causal explanation or contrastive explanation in the first sense in the type 1 sense, where it's an all things considered explanation. Indeterminism, indeterminism doesn't allow for an explanation given the entire past and the laws of nature. We cannot explain why the entire past and laws of nature led Jane to vacation in Colorado rather than led her to vacation in Hawaii. Or, to stick with Murley example, why the entire past and laws of nature led Jane to vacation in Hawaii rather than leading her to vacation in Colorado. So in the type 1 sense, there is no contrastive explanation. But in the type 2 sense, there is a contrastive explanation, as I pointed out earlier. 
because we can isolate a factor that caused the right choice but wouldn't have caused the core contrast. So we need to understand contrastive explanation in the type 1 sense. But then Franklin argues that if we understand contrastive explanation in the type 1 sense in premise 1, of course we also have to understand it then in the type 1 sense in premise 2, CF2, but Franklin argues that CF2, we have no reason to believe CF2 if we read it, read causal explanation in the type 1 sense. If there is no all things considered contrastive explanation of the core contrast of an action, then the action is a matter of luck. According to Franklin, that doesn't follow. But then the interesting question is why exactly does he think that TF2 is not plausible given this reading of, of contrastive explanation in the type 1 sense? This was actually not clear to me that Franklin has a very strong argument for why that is the case. So I would be very interested in hearing what do you think about this. Is Franklin right that once we've clarified that this premise has to be read this way, we no longer have any reason to believe it? This concludes everything I wanted to say about this formulation of the argument. Let me end by saying that Franklin takes an extreme view on the problem of luck. So most people think that the problem of luck is a serious problem. Even libertarians concede that the problem of luck makes libertarianism a bit less attractive. They think overall we should still be libertarians, but the problem of luck is a serious drawback of the view. It's something that makes the view less attractive, even though overall we might still have reason to believe it. Franklin stands apart in that in the fact that he seems to think the problem of luck is really not a problem at all. There's no threat at all um, the luck poses for libertarianism. So I'm very interested in what do you think. Is Franklin right that the problem of luck is really a non-issue or is there some serious problem here? When I first read Franklin, I was extremely convinced by his arguments, but now I'm no longer so sure. So help me out here and I'll talk to you soon.